Welcome back to Conversations That Matter. I'm Ron Gray, and I'm sitting down with my friend Jessica Bollinger. She is a licensed clinical social worker, and we've been talking about imago therapy and how we can incorporate these structures or principles into our lives and uh, build better relationships uh, with the people in our lives. So welcome yeah. back. Yay. Yeah. yeah, so Ron, we have to be in relationship. As humans, we're built for relationship. And when we're we, meant to connect, aren't we? We're meant to connect. Yeah, and we need that connection. And uh, and like I said before, an imago image, a template of familiar love. That when we came into the world, we need that connection. That infant looking into our caregiver's eyes, and mm-hmm. we say goo goo, and they say goo goo back. It makes these neurons just fire together. Yeah. 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 So get into the structures of imago therapy a little more. I know we talked about mirroring and how we acknowledge our partner's um, feelings, their needs, et cetera. Talk mm-hmm. a little bit more about that for folks that maybe missed the first part of our right. conversation. Right. And then we'll get into more of imago. Right. So uh, one, of the, one of the big key aspects of imago is called this intentional dialogue. Mm-hmm. And it's about being able to cross the bridge into the other person's world Mm -hmm. where there's a sender, there's a receiver. The the receiver takes their little passport, their little visa and crosses over into the other person's world and re and mirrors back what Mm -hmm. the other person says. And it's just one or two lines at a time that's 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 sent and then mirrors that back and says, is there more Mm -hmm. or tell me more. And it's kind of like that ends up that ends up allowing the sender to be able to see what the next like the cafeteria tray, the next cafeteria tray pops up and like and and this and Mm -hmm. this okay Mm -hmm. so it it creates this real intentional um being able to really get what's going on in the other person's world and then after there's not any more to um uh well let me see if i got you Mm -hmm. and i'll summarize it and when i summarize it i'll put it in my own words let Mm -hmm. me see if i got you Mm -hmm. did i get you yeah and Mm -hmm. then something else might pop in the other person's head then and then you mirror that Mm -hmm. and then the next part is your world makes sense to me because, mm-hmm. okay? And your world will make sense to me if I've gotten all, you know, it makes sense to you. So if I if it doesn't make sense to me, I just haven't gotten enough information, yeah. right? And that's hard work, mm-hmm. right? Well, it can make sense in all different sorts of aspects. Mm-hmm. It can make sense to me because, Ron, you grew up, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Or or it makes sense to me because I did step on your toes then. Yeah. I did. Yeah, that but makes sense. But when that dialogue is occurring and those things are acknowledged, it really um, connects us on a deeper level. Right. So that when, when right. we are in our heightened state, we maybe will be more apt to pause and understand maybe what your feelings are, what your thoughts are around what's going on versus just me, me, me. Yeah, and when I do this, when we do this dialogue, this intentional dialogue, I don't Mm -hmm. have to agree Mm -hmm. and I don't have to disagree. Yeah, It's not about me being right, you being wrong. Yeah, It's just listening. And then when I validate your world makes sense to me because um, your world will make sense. Mm -hmm. I don't have to say, okay, I'm going to start wearing blue all the time because you do. Uh, and then the last part of the dialogue is, I can imagine all this would make you feel. There's yeah. an empathy. Yeah. I can I can really get your world and how it makes you feel. Yeah. Now, some people didn't grow up with feeling words. Mm-hmm. I went to a therapist when I was 26, 27. She goes, how does that make you feel? I go, well, I can understand because my dad, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, no, how does it make you, how does it make you feel? Mm-hmm. Well, because my dad's Catholic. No, how does it make you feel? I had no feeling words. Mm-hmm. And, and and so in Imago, we give a list of feeling words mm-hmm. to help people with that vocabulary. You know, yeah. I had I had a book on my shelf with 30 days to more powerful vocabulary, but I had no feeling words on there. Yeah. So it's learning empathy. And a lot empathy of times is so important. people look at exercises around empathy or vulnerability as a weakness. And in fact, it's not. It's really a roadmap to us understanding each other more, right? That's where we can really fall in love is when we have that protective cage off. Yeah. And we can really see the other person. Yeah. Absolutely. So vulnerability is is real. It's it's raw, it's real, 
And mm-hmm. that's what makes couplehood so special that I can keep you safe mm-hmm. and you can be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Right. What do you say to folks that have misdiagnosed the word vulnerability or look at it as a, a term of weakness, uh, especially men? Uh, mm-hmm. I've done uh, uh, some reading of uh, Brene Brown a lot. Right. I'm sure you're familiar with her. And yeah. she's really a leading, uh, she's an LCSW too, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, she's really a leading voice around the vulnerability conversation and how we can incorporate that into our lives. And it's really been revolutionary in my personal life. Fabulous. And, in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Uh, it's allowed me to sort of step into the arena of conversations that matter and, and yeah. know that I'm never going to be a subject matter expert on any conversation I ever have with folks like you because you are. So I bring the folks that know uh, uh, this lane and uh, I learned mm-hmm. from you mm-hmm. uh, I'll never know more than anybody in the room at the community discussions because uh, there are uh, there's too much to know you know so I, I, I had to kind of acknowledge to myself it's okay I'm never going to know everything I'm not going to know much about a lot but if I'm vulnerable enough to sort of step into that arena and be willing to start a dialogue with folks right. about things that matter, mm-hmm. then this can really go someplace and maybe we can shift the conversation around a lot of things. Um, and that really changed me. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we did a we did a Brene Brown workshop at the farm did a year you? ago and it's fabulous about about that arena. Yeah. And and background with Brene, when she did this she did this uh TED talk and it had like boom, a mm-hmm. few days later three million people had viewed it yeah. and she goes, Oh my gosh yeah. and she felt so vulnerable mm-hmm. and she just like wanted to shrink back and stuff. But then uh that 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 um Teddy Roosevelt saying about mm-hmm. that it's, it's it's not it's not about the the it's the person in the arena that's doing the sweat that's doing the toll it's yeah. not the people in the stands the yeah. critics yeah. it's the person that's actually whether whether they're there whether they that they're there that mm-hmm. they are there whether they win or they lose mm-hmm. that that that's where that's powerful that's powerful yeah 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 and so and so like with that work who do you want to be up there in the stands, you mm-hmm. know, who are you going to listen to? Yeah. Are you going to listen? You going to listen to uh, people that can say that away, you mm-hmm. know, and that away. Mm-hmm. So, so th- that's the thing about vulnerability and learning this skill mm-hmm. is you you have the other that can keep you safe. It's yeah. about making relationships safe. Yeah. And like I said, we all need to feel safe and feel loved, and we adapt when we're really little to mm-hmm. feel safe and feel loved. Mm-hmm. We keep doing that. Mm-hmm. So being able to 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 have the safety of the other mm-hmm. is awesome. I have, I have found some others in our circle at conversations that matter, the community discussions. Mm-hmm. Um, I just had dinner with my friends Tammy and David last night. Right. I think I mentioned. Well, I was talking yeah. to Dr. Pollock actually, yeah. Dr. Susan Pollock, yourself, mm-hmm. Logan mm-hmm. Nance. I mean, right. the list goes on right. and on and on. Right. Um, and those have been sort of the folks, and they may not even realize it, but uh, sort of helping me measure, uh, uh, is this, uh, is this conversation being effective? Is it, is, mm-hmm. is it worth it? You know, because I'm having vulnerabilities over here, uh, in a way that I'm questioning myself. Is this, is this conversation going to go someplace? But those others look at me and uh, whether they realize it or not, sort of validate the work we're doing. So right. I think some of these principles are incorporated into our lives when we really do hard work and we don't even know it. Absolutely. Right? It gives structure to it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> well, let's talk just a little bit about, we've got a couple of minutes before we need to um, uh, take another break, but um, at Conversations That Matter, I have this theory that we have more in common than we have different. And, um, and Maya Angelou has a great quote about that, you know, that we're she? more alike than we are unalike. Yes. I loved hearing her say that. Yeah. Yeah, and I've had a I've had a quote on my signature email for years and years, and uh, it is by former President Bill Clinton. <coughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> and it said our um, um, our differences matter, but our common humanity matters more. Right, and uh, uh, I think that plays into the whole 
mirroring, validation, empathy, all the structures around right. Imago. And uh, um, uh, then vulnerability is sort of the rocket that launches all that, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, we've had conversations in our community discussions with conversations that matter uh, around a lot of not particular policies, but um, uh, public policy, politics, how it can be so divisive and really divide us. Into colors, right? Yeah, into mm-hmm. colors. And we sort, uh, Brene Brown says, we sort ourselves like we've never sorted ourselves before. We travel ourselves with people like us. And before you know it, we have completely divided ourselves in communities uh, across the country based on political ideology, what issues we support or don't, what politicians we support or don't. Mm-hmm. I'd like to get into a lo- little more conversation about how we can integrate the principles around Imago therapy into that community discussion, uh, if you will. Uh, but maybe we'll take a break first. Okay. And we'll come Great. right back and we'll get more into this about how we can integrate mm-hmm. these principles into our daily lives with our families, with our friends, uh, specifically about public policy issues because it is so daggone divisive. Yeah. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Mm-hmm. 